Today was the big day. In the evening, the android would return with the old man's son. The old man took a light shower. After brushing his teeth and combing his hair, he made his way towards the living room, feeling refreshed. It was a day off from his work, but he had other reasons to bustle about the house. Rather than standing around until the food arrived, the old man decided to occupy himself with some chores. He first checked for any messy spots around the house. The house was clean. Since the android had always kept up with her choice, that was to be expected. There wasn't any work left for the old man to do. So, at the very least, he decided to change the kitchen tablecloth. He took away the aged, dust-speckled one and laid out a fresh one with a sleek design. Then he brought out a pack of coloured candles, which he never had any chance to use. He also took out an assortment of fruits and veggies from the fridge. Since the android had already peeled off all the skins and cut them into pleasing shapes, he just needed to give them the finishing touches. This should be good enough. The old man muttered to himself while viewing the table, table full of food. It was the house that the old man had lived in for, for as long as he could remember. We had never seen the place brighten up as much as today. He thought about how he never had any many chances to sit down and eat with his family. So, this time at least, he wanted to savor a warm, intimate meal with his son. While rummaging about, the old man came across a room he had, that hadn't been used for ages. It was his son's room. The, room. the room had remained vacant after his son moved out. It was getting late, so he might stay over for the night. With the intention to clean the room, the old man opened the door. The old man found himself in shock. The room was so clean to the point that, that, that no one would believe it hadn't been used in years. The old man dragged his fingers across numerous surf surfaces, but not a single, single speck of dust was to be seen. It appeared that the, and the android had been cleaning the room every day. Had she been doing that just for the sake of cleaning the entire house? Been anticipating the day his son would finally return? The old man could not tell. At five o'clock in the afternoon, the delivery arrived. Since he had added numerous side dishes, it came out to be quite a large amount of food. It wasn't something two people would be able to finish, but that was all. That was all right. He could always save the leftovers for later. He transferred the delivered food into dishes and bowls, and then set them on the table. The old man took all the dishes containing foods that his son might enjoy, and placed them on his side of the table. He did not bother placing candles on top of the rice cake. It would be embarrassing to sing the birthday song and blow out candles at his age. He fiddled with the candle placements in an attempt to create an ideal atmosphere. He also prepared a bottle of fine wine that hadn't been opened for 10 years. Soon, the old man's very special guest would be arriving.
7.15 in the evening. Could it be that he was running a little late? It was the time the android had promised, yet the do doorbell did not ring. The old man strove to be patient. After all, it had been two years since they last met. Waiting for a few more hours wouldn't hurt. He tried to think up of some topics he would be able to discuss with his son. He had no intention of ending this meal with the fight when it had been so long since he last ate with him. The old man did some rehearsals in his head. He thought about how he would start and carry the conversation. He reminded himself that he would need to pay extra attention to his quick temper. Two hours passed in the blink of an eye. The clock, the clock now reads 9.25. The old man started to worry if something had happened to his son. He considered giving him coal, but stopped himself. He decided to wait a little longer. After about 10 minutes, The doorbell that the old man had painstakingly been waiting for finally rang. Suppressing the urge to rush out, he slowly made his way towards the front door. A silhouette of a person entered the old man's vision as he opened the door. An unfamiliar woman was standing before him. With the help of the serial code embedded on her body, he was able to deduce that it was his android. This happened every year. She was just inside a new body. There was no need to be surprised. The android made a small bow towards the old man. Returned. How have things been? How come you were so late? There were some unexpected delays. Okay. But... The old man looked past the android. But there wasn't anyone else beside her. Where's my son? There was no reply. The old man anxiously inquired once more. Where is my son? Unfortunately, he had other business to attend to. My apologies. Despite the Silveroy's flat tone of voice, the gesture of deeply bowing her head conveyed sincere remorse. Is that so? My son's not coming, huh? I'm very sorry. It's all my fault. The android apologized once more. Sorry about that. The android apologized once more. Lacking the energy to reply, the old man weakly hop hobbled back inside the house. The old man's stare lingered on the prepared table full of food. Much to his chagrin, he found it difficult to conceal his sadness from the android. The first birthday meal I've prepared in a long time. 
has gone to complete waste now. I don't think I could finish this on my own. The androids had lowered even further. Perhaps she was feeling guilty. It's not your fault. It couldn't be a help that he was busy. Raise your head. I think that was actually, supposed to be... Um, yeah. Done I'm not sure, right. actually. I'm not sure that... <laughs> it's, it's confusing that. Horrible. It's not your fault. It, ah, yeah, so it was... Yeah, so it's not your fault. It couldn't be helped that he was busy. Raise your head. Actually, I have brought a letter from him. A letter? What's it about? The android shook her head from side to side. It appears that she did not know herself. The old man sat up in his chair and prepared himself. Would you mind reading it for me? My eyesight is quite poor. The android nodded and took out the letter. She spread out long, a long. She spread out the long piece of white paper and began to read, making sure to pronounce every word clearly. Natalie. Father, I hope you have been doing well. First and foremost, I would like to say happy birthday and thank you for inviting me to your party. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive your son who is sending a letter due to unforeseen circumstances instead of paying you a visit in person. The needless formality continued for a little longer before finally delving into the main topic. It appears that two years have passed since the last time I was in touch with you. These years have felt both short and long, and have allowed me to think over many things. About this father-son relationship where we frequently quarrel. About this twisted relationship where we would end up scowling whenever we see each other. I've had more than enough time to mull it over. I pondered over why we always fought over even the pettiest things. Why both of us were so quick to anger whenever we, became, whenever we came to a disagreement and why we couldn't avoid these conflicts. Time and time again, I tried to figure out why. I tried to grasp why you found me so detestable. And soon enough, after thinking it over while putting myself in your shoes, I began to understand your feelings to a certain degree. I began to understand what you wanted from me and what you expected from me. In short... The Silveroid paused momentarily. Her wavering did not last very long. Despite her hesitation, she continued to speak. It appears that we are simply incompatible. A small, mo a small moan escaped from the old man's mouth. For the past two years, I realized that much like you have your own ways of doing things, I have my own. We have conflicting values and beliefs, and neither of us is willing to compromise. Indeed, by cutting off all communication between us, I believe both you and I will be able to lead happier lives. They say that some people were simply meant to clash with one another. Much like a relationship between a mother-in-law and a wife, hopeless relationships can always exist where you just end up despising one another no matter what. Father, perhaps we are born to end up in that sort of relationship. From now on, I ask of you to continue on your chosen path. As I shall press onward of, on mine, despite not being the one you would have favored. I have chosen to sever all my ties with you. I believe that will be the best for both of us. The, the android will act on my behalf and offer assistance to the best of her ability. Thank you for everything up until now. Goodbye.
And like that, the letter ended. With eyes closed, the old man sat quietly in his chair. He smiled bitterly as he digested the words from the letter. Got what you deserved. Repercussions. Still a sad ending. All right, this is a good ending oh, no. for the actual story. Oh no. Oh no, the consequences of my actions. Laughter suddenly escapes my mouth. Without hesitation, I reply to the repairman's question. I don't particularly regret it. And I don't plan on doing so in the future. I see. The repairman quietly stares at me for a good long while. Anyway, I've been short on hands around here lately. Short on hands? Yeah. Would you ever consider working here? I can't afford to pay you that much, but if you're alright with that, I'm willing to take you in. You can build up some work experience. I'll teach you a lot of things. It'll be tough to find someone as skilled as I am, you know. So how about it? I... Normally, I wouldn't be inclined to take up such an offer. But now, things were different. Well... Working here doesn't sound particularly bad. I'll be sure to think it over. With that said, I headed towards the ex exit. I opened the door and stepped outside. I was immediately greeted by the chilled wind of autumn. While zipping up my jacket, I looked up towards the sky. I spotted, I spotted a glint of sunlight shining through the cracks between the clouds. For some reason, I found the spectacle mesmerizing. It was truly breathtaking. Even on this cold day, I'm sure Lucy would have loved to see this sight. Just thinking about it made me laugh. Was Lucy burning down, like, a guaranteed going to happen? Yeah, it still happens regardless. Like, that scene happens after the Lucy burning scene. That doesn't look suspicious at all. Today is October 12th. Lucy. Uh, what is it, Doctor? We have somewhere to go today. In a grim expression, I whisper softly. 
somewhere to go? Does Doctor mean outside of lab premises? Precisely. That's pretty unusual. It'll be Lucy's first outing in a long while. Is it someplace far away? It depends on how you look at it. I reply calmly. Is it an important matter? It could very well be. Hmm, alright. Without another word, Lucy begins to trot alongside behind me. Yes, Doctor. I'll leave the rest to you. Understood. Have a safe journey. Where does Doctor wish to go? The nearby junkyard. The junkyard? That's right. Does Doctor have some business at the junkyard? Doctor? You'll see once we get there. I tend to sound as natural as possible, so as not to raise any alarms. It appears she has been right, seen right through my facade. Lucy, who is now aware of my serious demeanor, began to cower slightly. After that, there were many other exchanges between us. Both of us continued to walk in silence. After a while, I decided to steal a glance at Lucy. I noticed that she was trying to read my face without making it too obvious. To tell you the truth, Yes? No, actually is nothing. Doctor? Without finishing my sentence, I keep my mouth shut. Lucy tilts her head in confusion. She pretty opens and closes her mouth. Today. Her dialogue ends prematurely. After failing to get any responses out of me, Lucy turns quiet. We continue to walk without exchanging another word. We want to continue to walk in dead silence. Uh, um. Lucy musters up her courage once more. Sure is chilly today. Is Doctor not cold? I'm fine. Is that so? Uh, um... How far is Doctor planning to walk? Until we reach the center of the junkyard. The center? Yes. Lucy guesses that there must be something there. No. There's nothing there. Then why... The conversation veers into silence once more. I felt sorry for Lucy, but I sincerely wasn't in the mood to talk. With heavy footsteps, I carry on. We enter the junkyard, a place rampant with ear-deafening noises. A place that's constantly filled to the brim with waste. After taking a deep breath, I continue on my way. Suddenly, Lucy breaks the silence once more. Doctor? Doctor? What is it? Can Lucy ask something? Go ahead. 
did Lucy... Did Lucy do something terribly wrong? Did Lucy do something that she wasn't supposed to? What are you talking about all of a sudden? Lucy can tell. Lucy can sense something's wrong even if Doctor plays dumb. Doctor is... Doctor is trying to get rid of Lucy, isn't he? Her words threw me off guard. I quickly regained my composure. It is said that animals being taken to the slaughterhouse can already sense their approaching death. I'm not surprised that such a brilliant angel like her is able to read the mood. I decided to tell her the truth. It's just as you say. I... I was planning to banish you from the laboratory. Banish you, Lucy Valentine. From the lab premises. Why? For what reason? Is it because Lucy is a bad child? Is it because Lucy isn't the perfect android doctor has been hoping for? Has Lucy failed to meet doctor's expectations? Doctor, please give Lucy an answer. Lucy is begging on her knees, so please give her an answer. Authorities finally made an official decision. I was ordered to get rid of you. Get rid of Lucy? That's right. You've definitely turned out wonderful. The degrees we face by keeping you alive is too great. Humanity would suffer more complicated compared to what we could gain. Do you understand? That is why they're getting rid of you. It's what a lot of people want. After long, countless debates, this is the decision they ended up with. That Lucy's existence your existence is too great of a threat. They do not allow such thing beings to exist. They do not wish to create a world where hundreds of millions of androids like you will be running amok. That is what everyone said. Lucy, in the end, you were rejected by human society. You decided that you would not be allowed to coexist with mankind. Uh, oh, in the end, Lucy did not succeed. Essentially. I wasn't too bitter over their decision. I've been expecting it from the start, actually. The only thing I was concerned about was time. The time would take them to make this decision. Yes, their choice has always remained the same. Even now, nothing has changed. Yet, use Lucy refuses to accept the inevitable. Lucy? Lucy may not be an excellent android. But still. Lucy believes that she could change. People may despise Lucy now. But with effort, Lucy believes that she could change for the better. Lucy believes that she could become more suitable to Doctor's liking. Lucy will do better. Lucy will try her best. So please, don't leave Lucy behind. There's something you need to understand. If you allow this to stay, things won't be the same anymore. It's not possible for me to keep you at a laboratory any longer. This decision was agreed upon by nearly all the people who are aware of your existence. It's simply out of my hands. However, I have no intention of letting you be crushed to bits. It would be unthinkable for me to do such a thing. To someone who has stayed by my side all this time. That is why I feel like my insides being torn apart look straight into Lucy's eyes. I regretfully split out the following words. That is why, starting today, on October 12th, I grant your freedom. Lucy Valentine, you are liberated from your duties at a laboratory. You no longer need to listen to anyone's orders. And you're free to go wherever you wish. Go wherever you wish, do whatever you want, wish. 
Yes. Travel wherever you may choose. I find a good master. Someone who sincerely care for you. Live unhappily with your master. That is. That is my final order. Lucy remained silent. She stood frozen with her head slouched forward. It appears that Lucy is too late. No matter what Lucy does now, she will be abandoned. I did not reply. This time, I was silent. Then... Then Lucy should treasure this moment as much as possible. I give her a puzzled look. Since this will be the last time Lucy is able to go on a walk with Doctor. The last time Lucy will be able to spend together with Doctor. Lucy will need to savor this moment. Lucy managed to force a smile despite being on the verge of breaking down in tears. Lucy steps forward. She motioned towards me with her eyes, hinting that she wished to resume a final walk together. I now began to shuffle my own feet along. Our destination was merely a few meters away, and my feet felt leaden. Each step forward took a lot of effort, for both Lucy and I. None of words exchanged between us. We were silent for the rest of the way. Finally, I reached our destination. Here we are. This is where we part. It's time for you to choose your own path. When I had cast low, Lucy remained silent. Then she slowly raised her eyes. As of this moment, I relinquish all my authority over you. From now on, you have no obligation to obey any human being. You're free to live as you please. Whether you choose to live as a human, or view your identity as an android, is entirely your choice. Just as long as you're happy. There was no response from Lucy. She didn't seem to be paying attention to my words. She was staring vacantly as a certain spot along the ground. Puzzled, I called out to her. Lucy? It took a while for Lucy to respond. Her behavior was most peculiar. Lucy... I could not fathom her expression. She continued with a flat tone of voice. It... It feels like Lucy has always been dreaming. It feels like Lucy has always been trapped inside a very long dream. In the dream, Lucy was lonely. Lucy was always well looked after, yet there was a constant feeling of emptiness inside her. Lucy's time at the lab was most certainly enjoyable. Everyone treated Lucy very kindly. Yet it felt like there was something missing. It felt as if there was a gaping hole in her heart. Lucy has always wondered why she felt this way. Lucy has wondered for so long. Yet the answer had always eluded her. Only now, Lucy finally realized why. It's good to beat upon hearing those words. It was only after Lucy had arrived here. A heart, which has been frozen solid, is now thumping furiously. That she was finally able to discover what she had lost. Her quivering eyes turned to face me. Runner gaze full of anticipation. It's been a long while, Master. Narfi. 
with eyes full of tears. Lucy was smiling at me. Just like her old self that I used to love so much. While saying the words I'd been hoping to hear for so long. Calling me master, while smiling cheerfully. Like I'd always dreamt about. It was a scene I'd been fantasizing about every waking moment. I spoke with a quivering voice. That's still me? Still you. Fifteen years. Been fifteen years. That's how long it's taken for me to get you back. From the moment I lost you in front of my home. So much time has passed. I worked very hard all those years. I majored in robotic engineering, despite my hatred of the subject. I traveled all over the world to learn about the most renowned experts in their field. I was able to repair the broken parts and make them new again. I researched the workings of your internals. And I mastered a variety of skills, requiring intensive training. And I spent nightless days trying to recover the memory chips that were damaged beyond use. It wasn't exactly a walk in the park. And after all these years, I was finally able to restore you. But... But when you woke up, you didn't recognize me at all. Meaning I had failed to recover your memories. And after all that, my confidence spiraled down. After seeing that you really couldn't remember anything. After hearing you call me doctor instead of master. After hearing you talk about wanting to meet your master as soon as possible. After watching your unfamiliar gestures and smiles. I couldn't re be really sure if you were really the same Lucy from the past. And that's why I thought that... If you weren't the same Lucy that I knew from the past, if you weren't the Lu same Lucy that once held me dear, then you deserved a fresh start and a different master. I thought maybe there would be another master for you out there that could get along with you better, even, even better than I did. Just thinking about it was painful, but I thought maybe that would be the best for you. And that is why I had to, had decided to send you off. The decision to get rid of you had only made mine more resolute. I'd been planning to part with you all this, on this day all along. So it was the day when we first met. And at the place where I first found you. I intend to bid you farewell. Which is why I brought you here. But... I restrained from sobbing. But you remembered me. You finally remembered me. I almost collapsed from exhaustion while waiting for you. It really did take frustratingly- It really did take a frustratingly long time. But in the end, you remembered me. And... That's all that matters. Lucy? Lucy has definitely said this before, right? That Lucy would remember. That she would remember her meeting with Master at this place no matter what. That she would never forget. Does Master remember? I do. And now I can trust you. Even though you were destroyed beyond recognition. Even though your memory chips were dam damaged beyond repair. Even with all of that, there really was something left inside of you that contained your identity. And now, I can trust that you are the same Lucy that I used to know back then. Lucy can also... No. Lucy shakes her head and corrects herself. I can also trust Master. Nothing has changed about Master, even after 15 years. 
Master still needs me. Even after 10 years, 20 years, or 30. Master will undoubtedly continue to depend on me. So now, I can place my trust in the eternity Master wished for. My wish. The eternity I truly wish for. Before I'd realized it, the tears were already running down my cheeks. It tasted salty. It truly has been a long time. It really has. Every passing day had been absolutely grueling. Now? Master can take a well-deserved rest. I've been so lonely all this time. Master won't be lonely any longer. I've lost many things. All the time I could have spent with you. All the memories I could have made with you. Fifteen years worth of my life. I've lost them all. We can get them back. It's not too late. Slowly but surely, let us regain what we have lost. Together, let us turn back the clock. I'm... I'm still worried. Is the master in front of you? Really the same person from the past? I may have changed in some inconceivable way. Master has not changed. I have aged somewhat since we last met. I've gained a few pounds and gotten some wrinkles here and there. Nothing. Absolutely nothing has changed. And there's my beard. I've just let it grow out over the years. However, if you're fine with such an unsightly man like me, will you come with me? Will you continue to stay by my side? Of course. Because my master, whom I see before me, truly hasn't changed in the slightest. Master looks just like his old self that I used to be so fond of. And I know for certain that Master will never change. That is why I will remain by Master's side for all of eternity. Just from those words. Just from those words I was saved. After my exhausted mind had deteriorated so much with time, those words were enough to probably soothe the pain and suffering. That was all it took to satisfy me. That was all it took. To acknowledge that my efforts weren't in vain. I'm well aware that Lucy is an imitation. She's the closest imitation to a human being compared to anything else in the world. It was just that, to me, she was worth so much more than anything real. The Lucy in front of me, who was shedding tears for my sake. She was someone I cared for dearly. Losing her had affected me far more than I could have ever imagined. I was already forced to part from her once. Never will I lose her a second time. And now... I will chase the eternity I wished for, together with Lucy.